Hello. It's delightful to see all of you here. Uh, with This is a great occasion for us. Uh, I would first like to begin by introducing Father Jenkins, who will share a couple of words with us. One of the wonderful benefits of being a Catholic university is it connects us with the universal church. Uh, we feel part of the church, and the church, in a way, the universal church, uh, comes here to campus, and there's no better example of this than the visit of a distinguished Archbishop, Archbishop Marx, of a historic diocese, a leader in the European church. Uh, and I just can't tell you how pleased we are to have you here. Uh, it helps us gives us a more global, a more international perspective on the world and on the church. And uh, I'm sure you will add, add to our, our thoughts on, on the challenges of the modern world and how we can respond in faith. So you, on behalf of us all, most warm welcome to Notre Dame. I'm delighted to welcome our guest, and first I'd like to, enter, to uh, make some other welcomes. First of all, to Father Hesburgh, who's uh, sitting here with us. Also, uh, Governor Curtin, we're delighted to see you. Uh, and also, Terry Keeley, who has something to do with the Keeley Lecture. I'm Jim McAdams, the director of the Nanavik Institute for European Studies. The, Terry, the Terence Keeley Lecture is a well-established event at Notre Dame, something that uh, many of you have been involved in over the years. Uh, the first Keeley Lecture was given in 2004, and since that time we've had some of the most distinguished figures uh, and intellectuals uh, in the Catholic Church with us to talk about current issues uh, in the church, uh, both in Europe and in the world. Uh, some of those individuals have been directly involved with the Vatican, and some of those individuals, such as our guest today, are individuals who know something about the Vatican and may have some comments about it. Among our guests, uh, we have had in the, the past Archbishops Michael Miller, now the uh, Archbishop of Vancouver, uh, Celestino Migliori and Angela Amato. Tonight, we're privileged to have as our guest one of the most insightful and provocative thinkers and intellectuals in the German church. Archbishop Reinhard Marx was born in Nordrhein-Westfalen in 1953. So he is, he's the first archbishop I've ever met who's actually my age. <laughs> which is really an important statement for the church to make. He received his doctorate in theology in 1989, or he was ordained first in 1979. He received his doctorate in theology in 1989. In 2001, he was named Bishop of Trier. I don't know how many of you know about Trier, but there was a somewhat less influential German who was born there named Karl Marx. And I will get back to Karl Marx in a minute. Finally, in 2007, Pope Benedict XVI appointed him Archbishop of Munich Freising, a position in which the Holy Father himself had served from 1977 to 1981. Archbishop Marx is widely known throughout Europe. And I realized after reading the German press he has been called many different things by many different people. And so I saved, I collected some of these words. In terms of his personality, he is described as larger than life, um, as a happy warrior, which is a nice image, uh, a man who knows no pardon. That's serious. Cheerful, <laughs> cheeky, and a whiz with the media. And I know there's media here tonight, so be careful. 
Archbishop Marx's political views have been described in the following ways. Conservative, left of center, <laughs> moderate, leftist, and then finally, and this is kind of a Hegelian synthesis, which I like, left conservative. <laughs> So I was trying to figure out, am I a left conservative or am I a right liberal? <laughs> uh, and in my research on Archbishop Marx, I learned of some interesting things. First of all, he is the first non-Bavarian to be appointed Archbishop of Munich. And for those of you who know Bavaria, uh, this, is, uh, this is unique. And uh, this doesn't mean, however, that he's been incapable of learning the ways of the free state of Bavaria. When the Pope recently visited, he wisely fed the Holy Father Weisswurst, which is white sausage, white wurst, and something called Leberkäse. Now, what's interesting about Leberkäse is it's directly translated as liver cheese, which may not sound delectable, at least not to me. But what's interesting in the state of Bavaria is that it contains neither liver nor cheese. <laughs> but it is very German because it is actually controlled in Germany when you have to have the liver of the cheese and so forth. So he wisely served this to the Pope. Uh, the Archbishop is also a music lover. And he is said to be, and this is just something that I read, he is said to be especially drawn to the music of Johnny Cash. Is it true? OK. <laughs> <laughs> Most recently, Archbishop Marx has gained notoriety in Germany for having published a bestseller entitled Das Kapital, a play on the title of the most famous book by the lesser known German intellectual from Trier, <laughs> Karl Marx. Das Kapital, the sequel, is focused on contemporary discussions about the social teachings of the Catholic Church and this will be the subject of Archbishop Marx's lecture for us tonight. Archbishop Marx. Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy to be here and I would like to comment these statements, but <laughs> <laughs> that is not my task today, I have to give a lecture. I'm very honored by the invitation of Notre Dame. Uh, it's a famous university. And I said it uh, during the luncheon, uh, I will be responsible in several months for the, only, for the only Catholic university we have in the German spoken countries. And so I, I'm here also to learn from you what, what is a Catholic university. What could it be? Perhaps uh, I will mention uh, some points at the end of my lecture. I apologize my English, but I will try to, to give this lecture in a free way so that uh, I'm more open-minded open and I can see you. And I will... Uh, speak about the social mission, social doctrine of the church in the context uh, of the actual contemporary global challenges. And it's clear I will also see a little bit intensively the new encyclical, not new, nearly new, uh, Caritas in Veritate, because this encyclical is to seen in the, in the greater horizon of the social doctrine of the church. And so the first point is, I give you, from my point of view, from my tradition, from the German tradition, European tradition, uh, the framework of the social doctrine of the church, uh, the place, the place of Caritas in Veritate in this whole of the social doctrine. Uh, perhaps you know that, that, especially in Germany, the social doctrine of the church since the 19th century uh, had a good influence, good influence on the politicians. Um, that's a special German situation. There was a German Catholic party uh, uh, and the social themes, the social subjects were very important 
after the Second World War, there was a, the Christian Democrats were in, 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 uh, in power, and they were very influenced, they were very influenced, um, well, still today a little bit, uh, from the social doctrine of the church. It was a Catholic-dominated party. So it is a, a very um, important thing for Germany. For me, the social doctrine of the church, also in, uh, in this German tradition, uh, consists of, of three columns, or is a, a little bit a triad, a triad. That is the social doctrine uh, from the uh, magisterial point of view, the, the encyclicas, the council texts, the te text of the Second, and Second Vatican Council, and so on. Uh, the preaching of the Pope and the bishops, yes, two. And uh, the second point is the academic uh, labor about, about the social doctrine of the church, the social ethics in the theology or the, the institutes of social, social uh, ethics. Uh, they have to, to work it more in a, in a, in a, in a concrete way. No, the, 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 the ethics, the, the, the encyclica is not a political program or, or a program of, of a special ethics. You must work on it. You must uh, see that it's uh, uh, the guideline of principles, but you have to, to, in, to uh, uh, um, implant these great ideas in the concrete situations. And that is another thing. And you must find to, to bring scientific uh, arguments uh, in the social doctrine of the church. Uh, the encyclica, an encyclica is not a scientific text. That's another other genus. No? And so, so that's the, the second column. And the third, it's very important, the social movement, the social action of the church. For me, the three columns are together. That is the social doctrine of the church is not a, only the catechism. It's not a, a doctrine only, but is linked with the two others, the social doctrine, the social movement, social ethics, and they influence each other. Each, uh, influ uh, every column I influence the other. And so the way of the social doctrine is not only the Pope has an idea, and he gives it to the professors, and the professors make it concrete, and then the, the people, the lay people, has to, to act. No. It is also uh, the uh, sensus fidelium and the action of the people who urges the debate in the church, who urges from, from the ground, from the basis, the social ethics. And then, perhaps, uh, we need, we need a, a voice of the pope, a voice of the bishops, a voice of the magisterium. Uh, so that's the first point. Uh, when I speak about social doctrine, I think it's necessary to see this whole, not only one part. And the second point, the social doctrine is doctrine and social ethics. In Germany, sometimes we have a discussion about what is doctrine, what is social ethics. Doctrine is smelling a little bit negative, <laughs> smelling negative. So uh, the most of the professors prefer to, to speak about social ethics. But that's a little bit too short from my point of view. Doctrine will say yeah, there, is a, uh, there is a philosophy of mankind. There is more than, than uh, ethics. It's a greater horizon. And so I think we must also here, keep the, the two things together. Doctrine are not in a close way, in, a, in, a, in an exclusive way. No, we, we know all. No, as church, we are, we are in, the, in the power of, of, of the solutions. No. But uh, we speak not only about uh, an ethical point of view, we speak also about uh, anthropology. We speak about the philosophy of man. And uh, the consequences are ethical points of view, ethical, ethical principles, and uh, ethical 
action and projects or something like this. I would say that the social doctrine of the church or the social uh, mission of the church is an anthropology in a normative framework, an ethics of principles, not solutions, but an ethics of principles. And uh, one professor in Germany said uh, several decades ago, the social doctrine is a system of, of, open, of open sentences, uh, Sätze, Sätze. Sometimes I use perhaps a German word and, and, and the, uh, the experts will uh, <laughs> make the translation. And the system often as it's a system of open sentences. It's not a, 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 not, a not a catechism in this, in this narrow uh, thinking, I think. It's very important. It's open for new questions, for new, for, for, for new uh, uh, solutions. And a third point for this first part, uh, a great discussion was also in Germany, is the social doctrine theology? When it began in, in, in Germany in the 19th century, the first priest, the first professor of social doctrine was a priest, was a priest Franz Hitze. And uh, at the end of the 19th century, that was the first chair of social doctrine of the world. It was placed in the, in the secular uh, faculty of Staatswissenschaften, science of the state, not in the theology. And after the Second World War, they changed. Uh, uh, that was the first and only institute of social, uh, social doctrine of the church in Münster. But they changed, and uh, uh, the, the professor was... Cardinal Höfner at that time, Josef Höfner, very famous cardinal in Germany then and, and worldwide. But they had the cooperation with the other sciences, with the, with the Staatswissenschaften, political science we would say today, but at, at that time it was Staatswissenschaften. And they, they had the, 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 the plan and they had the, the, the accord that the, the, the students are together, that they can their doc make their doctorate uh, in both faculties, both faculties. It was very, very, very uh, uh, good cooperation. So today I would say the social doctrine of the, of the uh, church is, and John Paul II said it very clearly, I was hesitating when I was professor of the social doctrine about this phrase. I was not uh, absolutely clear about the sense of the phrase. The social doctrine of the chur church is in Santissimus Annus part of the moral theology. And I said to myself, I don't know. Perhaps it's, uh, it's more than this. If you see the moral th theology as the whole of that, what theology can say to, to what mankind had to do and has to do, then I accept it. But uh, it's, uh, the social ethics and social doctrine cannot be a, part, a, a, a smaller part of uh, uh, moral theology. And uh, so I think we must uh, renew the thinking, and the Caritas in Veritat uh, uh, tries to do it, makes it, uh, to, to see also the theolog theological uh, impact, the theological contents of the social doctrine of the, ch the church. The great discussion is, have we in the social doctrine of the church um, the, the the way, have we found the way to speak normative sentences for society, uh, rational for all men of good, uh, uh, for, for, all, for all men who, of goodwill? Or only for those who have the uh, theological idea of the Christian faith? That was very strong in Germany, and the great tradition of the social doctrine was clear. We want to speak for all people. We want to have sentences for all people. We have a normative idea which can be shared for everyone, for, for everyone who is open and who has um, was uh, was, uh, reason in his head. That's clear, reason. That's a, a new discussion, I think, uh, in the social, or, or, uh, it's, it's an important discussion and, and we must renew it. Faith and reason, the great uh, a theme of, of uh, um, Benedict XVI is here also to apply for the social doctrine of the church. Yes, the motivation is from 
from the gospel, the social mission, but when we formulate uh, rational sentences, normative sentences, they must be compatible to all men of goodwill. That we called uh, in former times the natural law. And uh, Benedict uh, underlines that it is necessary to have this renewal of the natural law. But to, to say it, we want the renewal of the natural law, is the one hand. To do it is another. It's very complicated. But it's another other subjects. A second, a second chapter. Now, this was the great framework a little bit about the social doctrine of the church, of, of my uh, point of view. The second is a, bit, a, bit, a little bit uh, nearer to Caritas in Veritate. When I waited uh, to, to have the text of Caritas in Veritate, my collaborator is here, uh, I said, I telephoned to the secretary, when is the text there, when is the text? was not there. But I had to make a statement for the other day. <laughs> <laughs> then from the conference of the bishops came the Italian version. <laughs> my, my Italian is worse than the English. Also. <laughs> Very difficult. And then uh, at 10 o'clock in the evening, in the night, I, I, I think the text was there and, and I read it for the first time to, to prepare my statement for the other day. And uh, hmm. I was a little bit surprised. <laughs> the beginning with the love. He begins with love. And for a, I was professor of social ethics and social doctrine of the church. It was, I was not, uh, uh, I was not, I did agree. The first reading, the second reading was better. But the first, <laughs> <laughs> first reading, I said, what, what does it mean? What does it mean? We are, we, when, we begin, uh, when we begin in the social doctrine, we, we, we talk about justice. Justice. Who, has, uh, uh, who, who can, can give justice to, uh, to, to, to the people? And then the second, uh, uh, like, uh, I, I, I read it for the second uh, time, and then I understood, and I think it's a, it's a, very, it's a very good, not absolutely new, idea, but a new point in the social doctrine of the church, to begin with the love, to make the, the step very strong that, um, that mankind begins with a decision of someone who says to us, to you, to everybody, you shall live. That's no entitlement, it's no, uh, you have not an Anspruch, uh, uh, a yes, you have not a claim to it. That's love. Someone says to you and to everybody, you shall live. You shall live. That's the beginning. And I think it's very important. And he says in the encyclica very clearly, um, that's not uh, an opposite to justice. But uh, it's, um, it's the beginning because when we realize that everybody is loved, that everybody uh, is alive because God says to everybody, you shall live, then we construct, then we build a society where everybody will have his place. That's justice. So I think the uh, realization of the uh, uh, social doctrine begin, to, begin, to begin with the, with the, with the love is not... Uh, is is, is acceptable, and not only acceptable, is, is a, a progress, I think. It's a new point of uh, construct the social doctrine of the church from, from, from this point. Although uh, the fundamental way of love, of acceptance, uh, leads us then to the guiding ideas of justice and the concrete issues of solidarity and subsidiarity. Uh, and that, that was new, and that is new, and I think it's, it's very good. And I will try to, to explain it uh, a little bit. Uh, when love is the great framework, the point of depart of the thinking of, of what is a good society, what is uh, good for mankind, then um, the idea of globalization 
uh, will have a new dynamic. For example, the, the idea in, in the encyclicals of the popes and, and also I think in the, in the Vatican Council was uh, uh, the, notion, the notion of uh, family of mankind, family all over the world for a sociological thinking, how is it possible? But for, uh, for a theological point of depart to, 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 to see um, everybody is in the same situation uh, to be loved by God, we can think, we can try to think what is called by the popes in the encyclicals the bonum commune universale, Weltgemeinwohl. Because we cannot construct or we cannot build a glo globalized uh, solidarity, like John Paul II said, when we have not the idea that everybody is in this communion. For, uh, 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 for us, that is very, very Im Im important. And so we can say it's, it's a little bit a metaphysical and physical reality to see mankind like this. Uh, a professor of um, law said to me uh, once, uh, uh, the re most revolutionary, pray, the most revolutionary sentence ever heard on earth is the first page of the Bible. <coughs> he created man as man and female and similar to God. That's only in the Bible, biblical tradition. The creation of man of, is, is in, other, in other religious traditions. But to be similar to God, imago Dei, that is the biblical tradition. And then Israel learned after the exile, when they had the great catastrophe, the great uh, disaster, they asked themselves, why, why is it, was it possible that God accepted our, our failure, our disaster, our exile? And then they learned, till today we learn, that this God is not our God. It's the God of everybody. And that we are one family. Sometimes uh, in Germany, perhaps here too, you say, are you relatives? Yes, from, from Adam and Eve we are relatives. All. <laughs> yes, yes, that's the point. That's the point. But to learn it and what, what, will, what, 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 what will it mean that we are one family, that we are brothers and sisters, and what, uh, uh, what is necessary to, to realize then, that is a very important thing. And so I think if when we, when we, uh, when we, th when we uh, uh, want to, to think uh, uh, the bonum commune universale in a real sense, not only say, ah, oh, that's, that's fantasy, that's fantasy, that's not a real, a real option, then we must have this fundament of, of, of thinking and, and that is, uh, that depended of this way, this fundamental way of love, uh, which is uh, uh, in the encyclica. The second point, um, the discussion, the actual discussions uh, about the relationship between institutions and virtues, or incentives and so on. You have it in the, in the economics, the uh, institutional economics, you have the discussion. And uh, I think we, the, the encyclica o opens the way, but there is much to do about this relationship. I said it uh, today in the, in the sermon, uh, in, the, in the mess, we have the, the concept that everybody is responsible, that uh, everybody has to give something in, in, in his, uh, 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 also has to live uh, the, the virtues, but also the institutions are very important. No? Not, uh, they are not, uh, uh, you cannot separate the personal virtue from the institutes, from the institutions. And uh, uh, therefore it's, it's very important to uh, find the point of depart also from love. You give more than you get. That is very important in a society. Um, institutions and virtue, the, rela the relationship between uh, the, the two uh, will be discussed also in the financial crisis. The financial crisis, this was a great, the great d d debate till today. 
to, to create institutions who make able that uh, uh, the gains, the targets of uh, the financial system will be, will, be, uh, will be seen, but it is necessary to have also the virtues of those who act in the system. Um, but the system must have the right incentives so that uh, the virtues are underlined and not destroyed from the system. I think it's a very, a very great task to, to work on, on it, and the encyclica gives not a solution, but that is a very important part also for the, for the institutes here to work on this, uh, uh, on this uh, idea of the relationship between virtues and institutions, and to have good institutions who underline, who strengthen the virtues of man. And uh, I think the financial crisis uh, shows it very, very clearly that, that there was failure in, uh, in both, in both, in institutions and virtues. The solidarity is a virtue and a structure, and that must be, uh, that must be uh, in, uh, in the view when you, when you create global institutions, too. I will speak about it. And the, th the third point of this part, the Pope speaks a lot of the theology of gift and gratuita in Italian. And uh, I think that's also a very important um, uh, labor to do. The encyclica has, has only given the, 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 the point of, uh, of depart or the, uh, the points of uh, discussion to see that um, we are not only in a society of social contracts, entitlements, mutual, do ut des, but uh, a society, modern society, also in the economy, some, some zones of economy, we live from gifts, we live from gratuita, uh, and the Pope uh, says it very, said it very clearly. And uh, to bring these two things together is also very important. Or you can say the homo economicus is not the, the whole reality. If you see the homo economicus as real, a real existent people, it's a terrible. Here I don't see them. <laughs> because it's in the, in, the, in the computer, in the theories, no? You have the self-interest and, and okay to, 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 make a, uh, to make a problem clearer, perhaps. It's okay. But it's not the, the vision of man. And, and we act not every day in this, in this way. It's, it's not possible to create a society, to create structures, to create institutions, really, on the base, on the, based on this, on this vision of man, I think. So the Pope gives here, I think, also a lecture and, and, and an invitation to work on it. A third chapter, and that is very important also for, for the, the social action of the church, social mission of the church. Um, in, the, in the encyclica, there is the great program uh, the great intention of integral, integral and comprehensive development. Since Populorum Progressio, this is a very, very uh, big subject in the social uh, teaching of the church, not to see uh, progress only as an economical growth, but to see it in a comprehensive way, to see more than uh, the economical progress. It's very important, the economical progress. Sometimes I have to say in, in, the, in the circles of the church, don't forget it. <laughs> don't forget the economical part of the, of the, of the, of the game. It's very important. No? It's the base. If you have nothing to eat, you can, uh, can have many dreams, but uh, you, cannot, uh, you cannot build your life on, uh, on it. And so uh, uh, um, this comprehensive view is uh, very Important and, and since Populorum Progressio, it was a, a theme, a, a theme of, of the social doctrine of the church. And so we must have comprehensive criteria of defining the wealth of nations. Adam Smith, the wealth of nations. What is it, the wealth of nations? I feel that there is a new discussion 
the new discussion about the GDP and, 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 and uh, I think the, the encyclica uh, didn't uh, mention it, but is in this discussion also uh, uh, involved. And we can, with the encyclica, uh, take part uh, in the discussion about the GDP and the criteria of real growth. What is it? How to bring the poor in it? How to bring public goods in this a criteriology of uh, uh, of a new, I would say, uh, of a new uh, GDP uh, uh, thinking, perhaps. But that is not uh, the task of encyclica, or is not the task of the Pope to clear it. It's 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 uh, uh, an invitation also here to the to the to the to the economists and sociological research to 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 uh, bring in discussion the new uh, ideas of uh, of. Uh, uh, thinking growth. It begins in Germany, and I think the, uh, the President Sarkozy has invited Amatia Sen and, 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 and others to, to uh, have a group to rethink these things. So, comprehensive criteria of defining the wealth of nations, of growth, of progress. The Pope says we need a new humanistic synthesis. A new humanistic synthesis. And uh, that's against an only economical and technical imperative. Economical imperative, imper imperative uh, what brings money has to be allowed. Uh, technological uh, or technical imperative, what you can do, technically you must do. That's, and, and that is combined uh, a little bit with the ethics of minus malum, and then you are in the dead end. That doesn't function. You must have another idea, of uh, a comprehensive idea, uh, so that you have criteria to say what is to do and what is not to do, what is technical allowed or not, and also to say it, it is there and then they will do it. Uh, that is that is the end of ethical uh, ethical views and, and and propositions. Dead end. And uh, the, the Pope uh, gives also um, um, the point that the life of human beings must be seen in all dimensions, all aspects. He speaks of human ecology. And that's a little bit like John Paul II. I think we have not learned in the Catholic Church to see the great vision of John Paul II too, because... Uh, the different wings, left liberals, cons left liberal, left liberal conservative. <laughs> I, I'm integral, <laughs> I'm comprehensive, but uh, that's very uh, difficult because some are for the for the development of the third world, uh, for, uh, some are against uh, uh, abortion, uh, and and the others are more liberal, and so on, so on. John Paul II, in his encyclicals and in his, in his teaching had brought, brought the things together. And, and the Pope Benedict XVI underlined it. This, if you are against abortion, you are also for political progress. You are for the social doctrine of the church because it is a matter of life. Justice is a matter of life. You cannot be, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know, you cannot be against abortion and then uh, say, oh, the social doctrine of the church is too left. I think it's not logical. And uh, the, pope, uh, the popes, I think, especially, he has longer reigned, still now, John Paul II, uh, has, has brought the, the things together. And, and, and the pope here mentioned a, a, a new human, humanistic thing to this. I think that is the point we can... We can uh, learned from this encyclica. And the fourth uh, chapter, the Pope speaks, and that's also a great que question after the financial crisis, he speaks about new arrangements between state, market, and society. That is a very uh, big line in the, in the encyclica. New arrangements, new relationship between market, state and society. First point, I think, really, and that is uh, also a Catholic tradition, we must 
have a, a rethinking, rethinking of the state. When I remember the last 20 years, when I see the discussions of the last 20, 25 years, we had in Germany, I don't know the situation here, but in Germany, Europe, a great critic of the state, the welfare state and the state is uh, too big, too, um, too many rules and so on. Uh, you, must, you must kick the state out of some, uh, of some things. The state is too dominating. Uh, and uh, I think we must now uh, see, it's not to re return to the, to the former ideas, I, that's another thing, but to rethink what is the state. We are, we are as Catholics, we are a little bit Aristotelians. The state, the, 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 das, das Gemeinwesen, das Ganze, the whole, is more than the, the summary of individuals. It's more. We, a, a, a good life cannot be achieved without the state. The state in, in this Aristotelian sense, because we, we need the others, we need each other. We can, with others, we can, uh, we can achieve more than alone. It's not good that the man, that mankind is alone. Also, on the first side of the Bible, it's not only a sentence about marriage. It's a general sentence, not good that man is alone. And so we have to think in a new situation, financial market crisis, globalization, Europe, um, G8, and so on, the, 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 the subject here of the global authority, what is it? No, we, we don't want a, a, a global state. No, it's, it's a terrible, terrible thinking, but we must rethink what is necessary uh, uh, when we speak about uh, a good life which depends on a good state. Aristotle, perhaps. And, uh, uh, and when we think about state, about the, we, we think that is democracy. And democracy is not only, uh, is not only a form to, 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 to build a state, but has ethical and value-based fundaments. And how to bring it in the global situation. Also, when we, when we think we, we must have more regulation, or, or not more, but regulation in a, in, a little, in a sense after the financial market, we can say the global market is only an economical uh, case. We don't need political arrangements. That's not true. We have the political arrangements. The, the question is not if we need political arrangements on the global, uh, global uh, uh, level, but what political arrangements? What? And uh, that will be a very, very important discussion also from the point of view of the social doctrine of the church. And democracy lives from, I, I would say, from, from, uh, uh, has propositions, prepo propositions uh, like uh, uh, culture, like uh, trust, uh, like uh, a communion of destiny, Schicksalsgemeinschaft. No? We are together. We, we, we live in solidarity, and you cannot have it on a very, very global level. It's very difficult to have this, this what, what means state, on, a, on another level. But we, we have to do it. I have no solution. I can only say that is a very, very interesting and necessary uh, uh, work to do also here. Then uh, we, we cannot say we, 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 we have the national state, and that's enough. <coughs> And uh, the global market is another thing that will not function. That will not function. We must work on it. The Pope speaks about the global authority. The, po the Pope said it since uh, the year 1960. John, uh, uh, John 23rd uh, uh, talked about it. But uh, most of the, of, the, of the readers of the encyclica, they, they are against it. They, they, they fear. That, uh, that there is something um, very strong, but not, but not to handle. But we must uh, speak about it, and I'm, uh, I'm convinced that we, like the Pope said, we, we need a subsidiarity in this, 
in this global authority, in this global responsibility. You cannot have global responsibility without political arrangements. That's not possible. You cannot, uh, you, you need institutions, I said it, virtues, you need the, gl the global, globalized thinking to be responsible for the climate change or, or other questions, but you need also political institutional arrangements to, uh, to guarantee uh, the guideline where it, uh, where it uh, goes on. And uh, when we speak in, in Germany, for example, um, um, that uh, free society and democracy needs responsible freedom, then uh, on a global level it, it's very difficult, but we must do it. Democracy and civilization uh, are very linked together and uh, I think it is not possible, I, I repeat it, it's not possible to, to, to make the idea strong. We need on the, on the global, on the global uh, in the global context, we don't need um, democracy and states and something like this. We must have uh, an arrangement. The WTO, WTO is one, one uh, but not enough. No? But we have, we have institutional arrangements. We must rethink them. And that is the, the great uh, 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 learning point of the crisis. No? The learning point is: Will we are able to be? Uh, will we be able to, to create these institutions to avoid to avoid another crisis? Um, our modern society lives from from freedom, from responsible freedom. Uh, uh, a great thinker in Germany said, um, "It is a little bit the." How do you say Achilles heel, Achilles heel, Achilles heel of the modern society? Because she lives from prepositions which she uh, himself cannot produce. For example, when a man says to a, says to a woman, the woman says to a man, "I love you." It's a very uh, private decision and, and and sentence, but the the the. the from high uh, public interest, highest public interest, the whole society lives from these sentences that the, the two they say, we will build a house, we will, we will trust each other, we will have children. That's the fundament of, of the society, but it's very free. You cannot, uh, you cannot force the people to do it, you cannot give them money. That's not enough. And so it's a very uh, uh, um, also a, a theology of gift a little bit, like the Pope said. And uh, the second point, we must learn that market, markets uh, are, uh, and competition is a product of civilization. That was the great idea of the order liberal theo uh, theory after the Second World War in Germany, the Freiburger Schule, Freiburger Schule was the reaction, uh, the reaction against those who uh, had uh, the propaganda for the great capitalism after the two wars, but that was not uh, economically, that was not successful uh, of the point of view of the Freiburg School. And then they, uh, they said that, that were the first neoliberals, but in another sense, uh, uh, neo rebels than today. And they said, we are order liberals, we think from orders, we think from institutions, which are necessary to bring the market in the direction. Not the market is the market. You cannot, when you in, enter in the market with political decisions, then you destroy the game, the necessary game. But you must have the framework for the market, and that is very uh, dependent of civilization ideas of civilization, of, of justice, and so on. Also, the market is necessary to enable human life, acting of man, uh, and so on. But uh, the market must also seen uh, not only as uh, the profit machine, uh, and um, 
the 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 the, the framework must uh, must sh look on the functions of the market. But uh, uh, we had we had a, a, a um, how to say a reduction of market philosophy. I think the shareholder concept was a reduction of the great market philosophy. I think. And so uh, I was uh, always underlining and, and the, the, uh, that shareholder are very important, but not the only, not the only stakeholders in the game of the market. I, I'm protagonist of the stakeholder market philosophy, and, and the Pope uh, underlines this, it, it too. So I think that's a, perhaps for the American eyes, of American ears, uh, strange, but in Germany, I would say that we make a distinct, the conscious distinction between social market economy and capitalism. The word capitalism is not, no, not positive in Germany. That uh, we will say all the parties, left and uh, Christian and liberals, they will say social market economy is our program. And uh, capitalism is, from the, from the word, it, it sees the capital as the main thing. And I think that's not true, economically not true. It's economically not true. Capital and labor and, and many others, the customers too. So uh, perhaps it is uh, not the... Uh, not a real uh, battle about the, the names, but uh, a, li a little bit it is uh, 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 an accent, an accent we make in, in, our, in our tradition, and I think the casual, Catholic social doctrine um, uh, is underlining it too. Perhaps it's the most important lesson we, we, can, we can find in this crisis, in the financial crisis, to, to, think, to rethink market <coughs> philosophy, to rethink the capitalism. Okay, to rethink it. What is it? How does it function? What is market? What is social market economy? Is there a difference? We must speak about it to find uh, a, common, a common way. And the third point in this chapter, uh, and the Pope says this, uh, says, uh, says this, uh, said it uh, uh, clearly, we, ha we have and we need a global civil society. Um, and uh, when, we, when we speak about the, th the three points, market, state, society, civil society, and that it is necessary to have these three points, the market, the state, the, the rethinking of the state, and the civil society, not the state only and the market, not the state only and the individual, but the state, market, and civil society, we also must organize it or it is organized on a, on a, on a global, on a global uh, level. And we see it, we see it. We see it in the music scene. That's a very clear, clear uh, 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 experience. And, and we see it uh, in, in, in other, in other uh, uh, departments or subjects. And uh, I think it's very, very important, especially for the church, to find a way to be in this society, civil society in the countries, but also to be in the global civil society present. And there I think we, we, we are the, the uh, sometimes we say we are the oldest global player of the world, and a global player and global prayer. Yes, that's true. We are the global player and global prayer. But I think, but I think we are not, not yet not yet in the, in the status. We have not the level, and we can, we can, uh, we can work on it, to, to play a role, to play a role more efficiently in this growing civil society in the global context. No? And so per, we, we talked about it uh, uh, before the lesson. Uh, perhaps the, the Catholic universities, when they, when they work together, they can, they, they can be a part of, the, of a global so, uh, uh, civil society. And that's very important. We see it in the negative way also in the media scene. 
No, when when uh, the discussion is there about the Pope and this and, and or or, the, uh, or other things, then you have it all over the world now. You have all over the world the discussion, and and so uh, I think we we are we have the institutions, we are together, we have uh, our communion, but we we have not uh, not yet I think or not enough the the efficient methods to act as civil actor in the society worldwide. And uh, I think that would be a very important thing when we rethink market, state, civil society on a global level, then uh, for, for us as Catholic Church, we must uh, strengthen our, 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 our ways and our thinking on, on a global way. Not only the Pope is not, not the, only, the only spokesman uh, of a civil society. That's, that's too, uh, too narrow. That's not the point. We must have a greater discussion uh, about Catholic thinking, about uh, 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 acting in the civil society. And we make it. We have the congregations. We have the ambitions. We have the, the development work. We have many, many things. But typically, Catholic departed. Everyone has his good uh, magazine there and so on. But to, to bring it together, to, to, to bring it in a, in a comprehensive uh, way together, that would be uh, the, the task uh, of, the, of, the, of the 21st century, also for the Catholic Church, other social society. And the, I finish. What is, the, what is the mission of the church in this, in this uh, globalized world? And uh, seen from, from Caritas in Varte, uh, Veritate, but also from the from the whole social uh, doctrine and social teaching of the church. I think inside we have to, to, to learn uh, thinking more interdisciplinary. That's uh, the crossover uh, of, the, of the different, uh, different uh, uh, thinking, uh, thinkings or, or, or uh, disciplines inside the theology and, 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 uh, and the life of the church, although the separation must be, uh, we must try to, 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 to uh, so, uh, uh, überwinden, overcome, overcome these uh, separations. And when we speak about the integral uh, vision of life and mankind, and uh, uh, like the Pope, um, and, and the living together, uh, we must uh, make clear in this pluralistic society, which we want, we are not against the pluralistic society, we must show now, how to say, uh, that living as a Christian, living as a Catholic Christian, living as a Christian, but especially the Catholic Christian, is a step to more quality in life. Not, uh, not uh, less life, it's more life. It's more life. That's very important and to show it in thinking and acting. And uh, that's very important, I think, for the future. And the second point, interdisciplinary ways outside. Yes, we must find new ways to bring our social doctrine or our integral view of man, our humanistic synthesis in dialogue with others, in dialogue with other religion, but also with non-religion thinking. The Pope says this in, in the encyclica, he says it is very important, but it's necessary that we have uh, uh, also in these others, uh, other thinkings or other religious uh, um, uh, 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 thinking, we, we must have the, the point of reason to speak to, to them. We must, we must find the way of a common language. Um, and he, he uh, made it in, in, in a brilliant way when he talked with uh, Jürgen Habermas as Kardinal Ratzinger uh, several meters uh, 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 near my house where I live now. There was the meeting between Ratzinger and Habermas. And that was a sign, a picture of uh, dialogue with, uh, with the other side. And I think the social doctrine of the church must be part of preaching of the gospel. Also, John Paul II and Benedict XVI, the, the social doctrine is, is part of evangelizing. Uh, and so it must be a part of the testimony of faith, part of real evangelization, 
like uh, John Paul II said. And then we are in the, in the beginning. Social doctrine is not only doctrine. We are right. We have the great sentences. But uh, social doctrine is social ethics, academical work in uni universities and institutes, and is movement, political, social movement. And that must be uh, our, 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 our gain, our target. Ending, I think to bring all this together, a Catholic university is the best place, <laughs> the best place to, to think about the points the Pope and, and the actual crisis and, and, and the, the, the challenges we have uh, to think about it. The future of the church is um, not in our hand, God thanks. <laughs> but, we, but we can do a lot. And a, a, a very important thing is, to, to, uh, is it, and it is the great Catholic tradition, to be on the level of the time in thinking. In thinking and culture and acting. Perhaps better than the level of the time. Better. And I think a Catholic uh, university can help that uh, we find this good future. And so I thank Notre Dame for all the work uh, which is done here. And I hope that we in Germany will also have Catholic, a Catholic university on a high and competitive level. Thank you. Thank you very much, Archbishop. Uh, we now have some time, a little bit of time for questions. And it's the policy of the Nanovic Institute uh, to, always begin, to always begin with students. So I know there's a student here from the Irish Rover someplace who gets the first question. Your Excellency, thank you for coming and for giving a very enlightening and insightful lecture. And I thank you for standing up and highlighting the importance of Catholic social teaching in an increasingly globalized world. Your opening comments discussed three pillars of the church's social mission in the world. The second of which you discussed was academic labor. And you described the importance of the university to work on the social mission of the church and help students and professors implant the social mission in concrete situations. I was also particularly interested in your discussion of the relationship between virtues and institutions. The university, too, is an institution, indeed, one that plays an important role in helping young men and women develop virtues necessary to live the social teaching of the church. What should be the role of the university, especially the Catholic universities like Notre Dame, in furthering the social mission of the church, particularly <coughs> and helping students to develop the virtues necessary to go out into the world and live and spread the social teaching of the church in their professions and where, too, they can be spokesmen of Catholic teaching in their ordinary lives. Yeah, I think I, I heard, one example is I heard uh, from the students, uh, you told about it, uh, about the social projects uh, during the co coffee. And uh, I think that's one point. A Catholic university must uh, not only give the best professors to the students, that's clear, <laughs> best, uh, but also uh, 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 learning to, to become a personality, to, 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 uh, to be a, a person with, with all the, the other things. You have the, 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 the priests in your houses and so on. That's it's important, I think, for the for a Catholic university. And then I, I can imagine that uh, social projects like you uh, make it, uh, they, they open the heart of the students for um, what, we say, what we say in, in Germany, for, for compassion. What we need is uh, persons in the political scene, in the economical scene, uh, with compassion. And I think uh, that must be possible. And so I, I, 
I, I, I found I, I uh, agree with with these social projects, but also with the thinking in uh, political dimensions. Perhaps it is, is, is possible to make practice or to make practica uh, with politicians and so on, to have projects to learn how politi political decision making or Wall Street or uh, is made. I think you do it, it's not, not new. But uh, to, to, for me, the social doctrine of the church is not only social in this sense that we, uh, that we uh, talk about the, the, the charity works, but also about the, what we uh, say in Germany, the political di di diacony. Although, for example, in the social doctrine of the church, uh, to see the def difference between charity and social doctrine of the church, I quote always the, the, the gospel, um, the charity is to help uh, the, uh, on the way to Jerusalem, to Jericho, the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the man who was under the, uh, a robbery there. No? Yeah? And the social doctrine of the church thinks about the problem, how to make the, the road to uh, ro Jerusalem, to, <laughs> to Jericho more secure that less people are in danger. Both is necessary. I say not the charity is not necessary. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you must also think about the institutions, the system to make the, the streets uh, more secure. And, and uh, I think both, uh, both uh, practica or both uh, projects may be help uh, on a Catholic university to bring the students in this, uh, in this uh, thinking of compassion. Uh, another question from a student. Yes, please. Uh, this is similar to, to the last question, but how does, how does a Catholic university um, remain in the world, a leader in the world, but not of the world? What are some guiding principles where a Catholic university can achieve that? It's a question of, for, the, for the whole church. No? To be in the world, but we are, uh, but we are not... Um, we are also looking, looking in the heaven. No? That's very important. You see more. That's very important. They say when you are religious or when you are Catholic, Catholic, you are very... You are not in the world. No, we must see, uh, we must show, we must show with our behavior and our thinking. We, we, are, we have, there's no anxiety in us. We are open. Open for the discussion. Come with your questions. Come, come. We can, we can talk to you. Uh, and so I think uh, the, the, the people must see in the life of the church, uh, in our life, that um, uh, being in a Catholic university or st have studied in a Catholic university is, uh, is the way to see the, the world more intensively, wider. It, uh, that, that can bring the things together in the world and not, not from the world. The world, is, the world is for us to narrow. We think, we think wider, uh, opener. We have a, a, a bigger, a, a greater uh, hope. We have a greater hope. The world is the world. What is the world? What we see, what we eat, what we gain, money. What is the world? We have a, a greater vision of, of mankind. That would be a way, I think, to uh, to make not the opposite in the world, out of the world, but we are. We have a, a point, uh, a standpoint, a standpoint. Yes. Yeah. Standpoint, standpoint uh, to see uh, to see wider, more intensively. The faith is not uh, a way to to exclude things, but to integrate all. The death, yes, we can look at it. We, uh, the illness, yes, we can look at it. We have no answer for all, but we have the possibility to see more and to integrate more. Just, I wanted to see if our students at Notre Dame are, are sometimes shy. And, uh, <laughs> so 
So I want to see if we can get one more question. Uh, you spoke about um, how we're motivated by the gospel to use the language of natural law and reason in order in, in social doctrine or Catholic social teaching in order to spread this message to the, to the whole world, since this is for all God's people. Given that in the United States, I can only speak of that because that's where I'm from, but in the United States, um, the social doctrine of the church is not well understood by the majority or accepted by the majority of Catholics, I would say. Um, maybe that's poor catechesis, but given that that's the reality, how can we better um, both root this teaching in the gospel in order to perhaps catechize Christians and especially Catholics, while at the same time relating that to um, the language of natural law and, and reason in order to spread it out to the, all of them? It's very difficult. I was a young priest, and uh, the, the Archbishop of Paderborn, where I was priest, uh, nominated me to be director of a social institute, and that was the target, uh, was the, the, the goal of this institute, the, the intention of this institute, to make uh, formation in the parishes, formation with politicians in the social doctrine of the church. Hard work, very hard work. After the Second World War, it was a great movement in the, in the Catholic uh, Church in Germany. Great movement, social doctrine of the church, social seminars. We had social seminars, two years. We educated, we educated in the 50s and 60s many people, and they, then they became uh, politicians, and they became uh, uh, responsible for the syndicates, and so on. It was a great movement, but then after the Council, after the Vatican Council and the, and, and, and the change with the society and church that was, uh, that was not yet there. But I think we must, uh, we must re regain the terrain a little bit. No? And um, uh, so, we, we, I would say we must find for our Catholic uh, people, uh, yes, that we must see that is the, cha the, the challenge, also for the faith, not only for the social doctrine of the church, to bring a new, higher level in our church. That's it. The social doctrine is not for everybody. I think that that's, uh, you must see uh, that's another thing to learn, to learn the, the gospel uh, than uh, to have the social doctrine of the church, where the great principles, you t talk about politics, you talk about institutions and so on. That's a, a, special, a special way, but it must be possible. If we as Catholics are not able to build in our communities or to, 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 to form in our communities people who can, who can uh, 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 make the politics of the cities, <coughs> yeah, it's not possible. But, but when, they, when they are in, in, uh, in, in politics <coughs> in the cities or, or in institutions or in uh, parties, Democrats or Republicans, and and, and in uh, uh, enterprises, yeah, I think a, a Catholic, a Catholic who, who wants to be a Catholic, he, uh, in this position, he has to learn a little bit about uh, the social doctrine of the church. He must be uh, uh, able to be uh, to, 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 to say what is solidarity in the Catholic sense, of the, not only uh, or subsidiarity or, uh, or other things. I think uh, that must be possible. It must be possible. And so, I, I, I don't know the American situation here, but uh, to have institutions more, not in the, in the academical uh, level perhaps, but have institutions for formation of people who are in the, in the, in the different organizations, uh, the media and so on, that's very important. And there is the social doctrine of the church, I think, very important. With the natural law, that is, that is uh, complicated. I think... We, our motivation is not the natural law. Our, our motivation is Jesus, and we have the meeting. We have the meeting with him, and we say, "You, you are the master. You give the program, and then we have to, to decide the ways and so on." Uh, but when we speak about uh, the organization of a city, or the organization of a land, and with others together, we must find rational arguments for our proposal. And that is, uh, I think, we, can, we cannot say uh, what Jesus said to the financial crisis. 
Yeah, we can say, in a, in a pre in a sermon, I can say, that's not okay. But how to, 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 uh, to bring a solution, we must discuss with the experts, we must see, and, and how to make it, institutions and learning, and, and you must find also the acceptance of others. That is the, the idea of, of natural law, I think. This is the idea. But sometimes the natural law is discussed in our, in our circles as our property. The, 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 national, the, 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 the natural law says, but uh, the other don't understand. And then we, we are wrong. Not the, we must find the way. Not the other must find the way. We must find the way to him. In, in, in formulating and, and discussing. And that's so you have not understood. Why? We must, uh, we must uh, go on in the discussion. And so, therefore, uh, in Germany we have a, a professor who said we must uh, renew the, the national uh, law in a critical, in a critical uh, way. And, and I'm not sure... Josef Ratzinger, as professor, as young professor, was very critical with the, with the natural law. There is a, an article of 59, I know it, mm -hmm. I read it as a student, it was very critical. Because he said, uh, I, uh, and, and, and uh, the, the, the revelation uh, of, in Jesus Christ is, is so important, and the Council said it, uh, in, in Jesus Christ we find the real uh, vision of man. But I think we must also find a way to bring for the organization of, of politics and economy, um, the thinking on this level that we are, that we can have the acceptance of those who came only, only, only from reasonable arguments. Difficult a little bit. Difficult. But we have another question here from a student. Uh, where is the microphone? This is being broadcast on streaming video. And, and it's worse, they're watching you in Germany right now. Uh, so it's important that uh, we use a microphone so that the questions can be heard. Oh, I think that's clear. He, he didn't answer my question at the end of his uh, talk. Okay. okay. Or here, here. I loved uh, your comments on the need for building a global community uh, and being aware of our brothers and sisters throughout the world. Uh, to me, it seems like it's difficult enough to build responsibility uh, even for members of the same city or town, uh, let alone other countries. And I was wondering if you could expound upon that a little about your experiences both as a parish priest, as an archbishop, as someone who's going to be in charge of a university, how you found ways of building this sense of responsibility for all. That's also the Achilles heel, Achilles heel of the uh, modern society. We want the modern society. I, I say also in the Catholic discussions, the modern society, what is modern, but the modern society of uh, pluralistic uh, uh, views and, and, and freedom and, and, and human rights and, and democracy and so on, is a progress. Is a progress. It's difficult, very difficult, to, to organize a complex society like this and to keep them together. I spoke about the concept of the democracy, and we, we feel it in Europe. Uh, it's also a community of destiny, uh, Schicksalsgemeinschaft. And that's not only the football team, <laughs> <laughs> must be more. Huh? And that's for the Americans, and that's uh, also Germany. We have elements, we have symbolic elements, when all are feeling together something. But uh, it's difficult. We have in, in Germany, we have the experience of the, of the Spaltung uh, um, uh, der Kirche. The vision of the church. The vision of the church was the first uh, thing that all are not together. No? That, that's, but there was a Christian faith in Europe. The Christian faith as, as uh, feeling 
uh, and as acceptance of, of, of a great tradition. But uh, it, it, I have no idea how to, to create a democracy on the long run, on the long run, without common virtues, without common, common uh, uh, convictions and celebrations. You had here in the United States the great discussion about civil religion that exists not in this way in, uh, or existed not in this way in Germany or in, in the other country because the Christian faith in Bavaria is this uh, this civil religion. No? The, they, the most of the people they say yes, with the, the Christian faith, and, and they are they are angry when in the, in the public schools they will not have the cross. In the public schools, not in the private schools. Well, that's another situation. But the future will be a democratic and pluralistic society. The difference, I think, between society and Christian faith will, be, uh, will become greater. And, and that's not, uh, I think, we must not have fear about it. That is the challenge for us to be in a pluralistic society, a profile, uh, a clear profiled uh, answer, no? invitation, invitation, uh, not to be in a, in a ghetto, but to be in mid, in midst of the uh, society to have uh, an, uh, an answer, an invitation to live it. But how to bring, how to bring uh, the different, the different opinions and virtues and cultures together, is also for the United States a great, a great challenge. And that's the discussion in Europe now. We have a, a, a Europe with different languages, I think, 17 official languages, uh, 17 or 18 official languages. The European Union. The European Union. Yeah. The languages, <laughs> literally only spoken for 2 million people or 3 million, but all is translated, but it functions, it's, it's possible. Uh, but it's complicated, it's very, and I don't see the future in 100, in 100 years. You, when I was first in the, in the Congress in, in Washington, we were together three years ago. I was very surprised to be in the, in the, uh, in the Abgeordnetenhaus, uh, House, of Rep House, of House of Representatives. You see all the, the great uh, philosophers of law you know, yeah. in uh, there. No? The Hammurabi, yeah. Hammurabi uh, Mohammed, Mohammed, Mohammed. Uh, for German, uh -huh. mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 two popes, two popes yeah. in the secular society. Pope uh, uh, Innocent the Third and Gregor the Great. I think I was surprised, huh? but it, I, I can understand the United States they, with their history of pluralistic uh, immigrant immigration, and, and, and they were that is the 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 the, 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 the way to show. We want to be together, and we bring the things uh, together. No? And, and the, the beginning was the beginning was uh, a prayer for in, the, in, the, in the House of Representatives. It was a Dutch uh, reformed prayer with the uniform of the, the soul. It came from the Iraq War. <laughs> yes, and the prayer. And I asked the chaplain. It's a Catholic chaplain now. In the, uh, I, I don't know if he, if he is still there. I think he is. He is still there. And I said, and what's what's the Hindu priest comes to? Yes. For us as Germans, <laughs> incredible, <laughs> incredible. So we have different different situations, but uh, the both situations show your question is one of the most important for the future of democracy. If, uh, and I, I I can only say. Uh, if we have not the, uh, the concept of natural law or insight for everybody, and I think uh, human rights and so on, and it would not be possible to, to, to create a, a global uh, society. And, and I think uh, that's a very important challenge also for the church, for the Catholic Church, to underline it, to underline reason and faith, and that we are able to create, because we are men, Mankind, male and female, all over the world. Because we are men, we can create a community. That's uh, the sense of natural law. We can also, when you are not Christian, we can create a good society together. And otherwise, uh, the future will be 
very point points of interrogation. Question. Question. Yes. How is it important to communicate to people who are not Christian using reason and natural natural law? Is this working? Okay. Um, I, I, that just it certainly is interesting because some of, it, some of my experiences in academia, um, I've noticed or heard um, that that such ideas as both reason and natural law are often um, heavily disputed and often not accepted, at least like substantive reason, reason that can like sort of argue for values or argue for actual systems. And so I'm wondering if you could elaborate on what specifically like the church or Christianity brings uh, as far as like a new new method of reason or method of reason that can actually actually answer these questions because it seems that a lot of like the positivistic or uh, like scientific reason that is often used in in universities etc uh, isn't particularly useful for that. I don't know if I have understood all, but I think perhaps that's, that is enough. The great a great must be a great uh, discussion. But uh, I think uh, it's, it, it is in the in the thinking of the European and, 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 and classical tradition. And so uh, when we speak about natural law and and, and, and reason and so on, uh, the others they say that's your concept, your European and, and, and Catholic and Christian concept. That that is not uh, uh, not easy to to. Uh, to overcome this uh, this discussion and to find the the, the point uh, together, I, I'm not sure. I, I don't know uh, uh, too much about uh, all the other religions and, and, and cultures. Uh, I think we must make the experiment. We must talk. We must make the dialogue. Otherwise, it's not possible. Theoretically, it's not possible. Also, I think a challenge of a of a Catholic university to make a dialogue with others to to. To make the experiment, is it possible to speak about justice with uh, persons from totally other uh, culture and religion, and, 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 and then you can then you, then you can feel uh, uh, the the the, uh, the, uh, the possibilities of, of this uh, of this uh, natural natural law, not theoretically, but uh, in the in the concrete dialogue. I think. The church was underlining, and that's I think not known, always uh, a strong reason and, and a positive uh, view of, of man to find God. The First Vatican Council uh, underlined, yes, when you are thinking very good, I said in my words, when you're thinking very good, you can you, you can find the existence of God. No, it's not impossible, but. That's another case, uh, if it is uh, if it is uh, uh, possible. But uh, uh, necessary is a great uh, great department of philosophy. Philosophy is we had uh, the, in the in the last uh, 20, 40, 50 years, I think, also a philosophy very yeah weak, yeah weak in in, the, in a special sense uh, was not encouraged to, to find truth. Well, to change to change meaning everyone has his meaning but the philosophy can find truth and um, that must be must be possible and so I, I think it depends uh, this dialogue depends also on the on a, on the development of the philosophy Although not the theology alone but the philosophy is the the, the terrain and to, for the dialogue with, with all those who, who come from reasonable points of view. I have no other, other choice. Well, thank you very much, Archbishop, for this. Before, before you leave for Washington, you must accept our gifts. <laughs> so we have a few souvenirs for you. First of all, uh, this very pretty white tube, uh, which actually has a poster for the event. Uh, we also have a, a wonderful book here of uh, photographs of Notre Dame, which I think you'll enjoy. And then finally, to today it looks other. <laughs> yeah, well, 
I've, I've already said that we are trying to emulate Bavaria in, uh, in just the right uh, environment today. Uh, but soon both Bavaria and Notre Dame will look like this. Uh, and uh, finally, to carry this and other things that we're giving you, uh, I would like to present you with this photo. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.